So we all want loud mixes that compete with other commercial records, but if you just pancake your mix and go splat against a brick wall, no one's gonna wanna listen to it. So I'm gonna give you a little known secret that helps pros achieve loudness and dynamics at the same time. So if you've ever mixed a song, you've probably had this struggle, right? It's sounding weaker, kind of quieter, softer than other, you know, mastered, finished commercial records. And so you try some different things to try and get the loudness up, but then you just completely ruin your mix. And look, sure, you can achieve just pure loudness by just throwing a lot of limiting or even just clipping on your mix bus, you can get things really loud. But then what happens? All your punch is gone, right? All the dynamics, all of the, the transients of the kick and snare, they all get squashed and flattened and your mix doesn't breathe. And even if you take the better approach of building loudness into the mix track by track, well, you can still end up having a mix that feels like it's cranked up to 10 all the time. That means it doesn't breathe, it doesn't move, and it might sound exciting for the first 20 seconds, but then it just gets really fatiguing and eventually painful to listen to. And if your mix is fatiguing, if it's just loud but it has no life, then people are gonna get really bored of it very quickly. And so they end up missing the song because of your mix. And unfortunately, I hear that on a lot of amateur mixes. So this is a bit of a mystery, right? In order to get loudness, you need less dynamic. You literally need less dynamic range that is required. But for movement and punch and energy and excitement, you need dynamic range, right? So how can you get both? Now I'm gonna tell you about a technique that I've been using for many years, and until now I've really only shown and talked about it inside of my paid courses, and I call it micro automation. And to sum it all up, when it comes to getting that movement and dynamic range while also having really loud mixes, one day I just kind of stepped back, zoomed out, and looked at what I was doing across all my mixes over the years, and it just hit me. I was basically using a whole bunch of different techniques to reduce the dynamic range across the mix track by track. And then I was using micro automation to add those dynamics back in. So you reduce the dynamic range track by track. I'm not just talking about on buses or on the mix bus. I'm talking on individual track level. And that does not mean just throwing a limiter on every single track, okay? There's specific tools that I'm using for, uh, to achieve specific things. But reducing that dynamic range track by track and that gives you the overall loudness. And then on a micro level, you go and add those dynamics back in. And when I'm talking micro automation here, I'm not just talking about turning the whole course up one dB and bringing the quiet bridge down a half a dB and, and that's it, okay? I'm talking in depth, track by track, in detail. And I want you to kind of dig into this and discover it for yourself, but I'll give you a few places to start here. And a huge area where this is effective is on the drum. So let me show you real quick. So if we look at this section going into the course here, right here we've got a few kick tracks right there. And then this is just the VCA fader automating all the kick tracks at the same time. Same thing with the snare here. We've got snare reverb here. So let me play this little part. Doesn't matter. So look at what's happening here on a micro level. Look at the snare and the kick. So you see how he's doing this uh, snare tom build? Here's the floor tom right here. So notice how I've brought this down and I've ridden it up. So we're actually emphasizing the build that he's doing on the drum. And then right here, we've got the kick level pushed up a little bit here for the downbeat of the course. So that hits a little harder. Then we do a similar thing on the floor tom here, building it up. And then another area that I really love to use this micro automation technique is on the overhead. So look at how I'm automating the crashes so the cymbals stand out when they need to, but that they don't overpower the mix. Notice how we get a push, that big crash at the start of the course. We do it again here. can see all this automation across the drums, even on reverb returns. And if we zoom out here, you know, you see tons of automation. This is just the drums. So you see this across kicks, snare, toms, overheads, even different reverb returns, buses. And then of course it extends down to bass, guitars, vocals, all the other tracks. And this goes deep. This is not just about, you know, the single layer of volume automation. Okay, and, and almost every mix I'm doing, I'm automating EQs. 
I'm sometimes automating compression and saturation to build and come in and out throughout a mix. And it's all about further enhancing the dynamics and the excitement of the song and really pulling a listener into the mix, keeping them uh, engaged and exciting and highlighting everything great that's happening in song. Now inside my pro production system, I have plenty of mix training across a bunch of different genres and different songs where you can see exactly step-by-step step how I'm adding all these different layers of automation with volume and EQ and, and other effects and all the thinking behind all those moves and how to get that much automation into your mix really quickly. Because even though I'm doing that much automation, and again, it's not just volume, it's all these other layers, I can do that and still finish a mix within five or six hours. So this is one of the ways that I'm able to get really big, loud, competitive mixes while still maintaining dynamics, having the mix breathe and move and still sound like it's a band playing together and really pull the listener through the song instead of just having the audio just splat against a brick wall. If this is brand new to you, then go give this concept a try. Do it right now if you can and start with just those tips on those areas that I mentioned for drums and then try to use your own creativity and instinct and think of how you can bring that to guitars and bass and vocals as well. I think it'll bring a smile to your face. You'll start hearing out of your speakers the things that you hear on the pro mixes that you love. And like I said, micro automation, this is something that I do on every single mix but there are also seven other things I do on every single mix that I tackle. And if you wanna find out what those other seven things are, check out this video right here. All right, talk to you soon.